Cause you love like no one ever could Yeah, you are my provider You are my best friend You will never fail You're faithful to the end I trust you cause you're perfect Trust you cause you're good I trust because you love like no one ever could Yeah, you are my provider You are my best friend You will never fail Go! I won't doubt you for a second For a second Hey gang, and welcome to Wellspring Kids, where we have a service created just for you. And hopefully you just finished worshiping because we know that when we engage in worship, we tell Jesus that he's most important. And not only that, when we listen to the words of the songs, it prepares our heart and our mind to hear the message from God's word. And that last song you just sung was called Children of the Light. It's reminding us that we're not just God's children, which we are if we've asked him into our heart, but we're children of the light, of the light of the gospel. And Jesus calls us to share that light. And that leads us to our go answer. Our go answer says, God makes us the light of the world. Say it with me. God makes us the light of the world. One more time. God makes us the light of the world of the world. And we're gonna see that we have a big job to do, but I know you can do it because I see pilots sitting in front of me. Sitting up straight and tall or standing up straight and tall, let's practice. Prepared, involved, loving, open to God, team player. Now we learned last week that being a pilot is more about thinking the right thoughts and doing the right things than just behaving at Wellspring Kids. Because when we think the right thoughts and we do the right actions, people notice. And when they notice, we can point them to Jesus. Because being a pilot for Jesus is about helping people take a step closer to Him. So this week, I want you to think about our lesson and think about being a pilot so that you can think about how to change your actions and how to do things that point people to him. That reminds me of our verse, which I have to confess, I got it wrong last week. If you were paying attention, I said, we don't need to read it out of the Bible because I know it and you know it. And guess what? I got it wrong. So let's go back to God's word and read it so we can get it right. So in Colossians 3.10, the Bible says, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. Colossians 3.10. Let's practice. Get ready. Put on your new nature and be renewed to learn to know your Creator and become like Him. Colossians 3.10. So good. Let's practice that one more time. Put on your new nature and be renewed to learn to know your Creator and become like Him. So if we're renewing our mind, that's where I got mixed up last week, in our hearts, through the power of God's Word, and we're reading the Bible, and we're making observations, and we're making application, and we're praying over it, and we're thinking more like Jesus, and becoming more like Jesus, and acting more like Jesus, wow! Our life begins to share the gospel message before we ever say a word. Now, how is that even possible? We're gonna find out today just how that's possible and just what our responsibility is. Are you ready to have a responsibility? I think you are. Like for me, taking care of Marshmallow is a big responsibility. I have to make sure I know him 
and I take care of him. Because if I don't, he could be sick or get in trouble. So I have to be responsible. Do you have responsibilities in your life? I bet you do. Well, let's go back to creation. I think we're on day four. So what does the Bible say about creation on day four? If you have your Bible, look at Genesis 1, 14 through 19. That's Genesis 1, 14 through 19. If you don't, you can just listen as I read. Then God said, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days, and the years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And this is what happened. God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day and the smaller one to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, to govern the day and night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening passed and the morning came, making the fourth day. Well, God made some really important things on the fourth day. He made the sun and the moon and the stars so we could have light by day and light at night. Now, here's something that's important. The sun makes its own light. And that's like Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is the light of the world. Now, the moon doesn't make its own light. The moon reflects the sun's light. So if the sun weren't shining, the moon wouldn't have light. And that's like Jesus in our life. When we accept Jesus into our heart, he fills us with his light and we become a reflection of him. Isn't that amazing? I think that's pretty amazing. Well, let's look and see how that applies to us today. We're gonna look at the New Testament. We have a lot of scripture today. And if we look at Matthew, Matthew 5, 13 through 16, Jesus is teaching a very important lesson. So put on your thoughtful face and stroke your imaginary beard and get ready to think because this is a thinking passage. Are you ready? Okay. Matthew 5, 13 through 16 says, and this is Jesus talking, so it's really important. You are the salt of the earth. What good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You're the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In that same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Wow, Jesus is teaching us a lot. First, he talks about salt. And we put salt on things to preserve things and to hold back corruption. So we, as Christians, as believers, are like salt. And so we help preserve the gospel. We help to hold back corruption. But the Bible also says that we're a light and we should be a light to the world. And the Bible tells us that no one lights a candle and then puts something on top of it. That would be silly. Let me see if I can light this. If I light this candle, here we go. It begins to shine. Now, would it do any good if I covered it up so no one could see it? No, ouch, it's burning my hand because it's not meant to be covered. It's full of fire and light and it's meant to shine out for everyone to see. And the Bible, Jesus goes on to say that it's not just a candle, but it's our good deeds, just like being a pilot. When we're a pilot for Jesus and we think right thoughts and do right things, our good deeds shine before men and they see the glory of the Father because Jesus is inside of us. Isn't that amazing? I think it's pretty amazing. Let's put this over here for right now. We'll blow it out. One more passage we want to look at, and this is in Corinthians. Now, that was Jesus talking. Now, this is the Apostle Paul, and we know the Apostle Paul because we've learned a lot about him. 
But one thing that's really important about the Apostle Paul, he always gives credit to Jesus for being his Lord and Savior. Just like Jesus points us to the Father. So Paul and Jesus know that it's the Father's business that's the most important, not ours. Jesus was our example, and Paul's another example of doing right. So let's look at 2 Corinthians 4, 4 through 7. The Apostle Paul says, through God's word, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light to shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay, pot, clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. The Apostle Paul says so many important things. He says that until we know Jesus, we don't understand the light of the gospel. But once we know Jesus and he is inside of us, the Holy Spirit's inside of us, he begins to help us to understand all the good news of the gospel. Also, it's important that we don't talk about ourselves and praise our own good deeds, but that we talk about Jesus and praise him. And that draws people to him. Wow, that's a lot to think about. So when you do a good job, do you like recognition? Do you like people to praise you? Yeah, me too. But the Apostle Paul says, no, don't seek praise, seek to serve Jesus. And the Apostle Paul says, it's not that we do good, but it's the power of God that's in us. Because if you remember, when we studied the armor of God, the power of God and the battle is in our heart. It's not in front of us. So if we have Jesus in our heart and the Holy Spirit inside of us, he gives us the power to overcome wrong, and he gives us the power to do right. The Apostle Paul also told us about God creating light, which we read about from Genesis. So many things in the Bible, so many exciting, important things. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God made the sun, and the sun is as a representation of Jesus because it gives off its own light, and the moon reflects the light of Jesus or reflects the light of the sun to give us light at night. So when the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us and fills us with the light of Jesus, that light shines out for all to see. And we shouldn't hide it. We should tell everyone about it. And more important than that, we shouldn't praise ourselves. We should praise Jesus. Because the Apostle Paul praised Jesus and Jesus himself pointed us back to God the Father. Wow. That's a lot of observation and a lot of application, but I know you can handle it and I know you can think about it and pray about it and apply it to your life. Let's think of it this way. Let's imagine that this is us and this is a nice piece of glass, it's a piece of crystal. There's nothing wrong with it, but it really doesn't do anything. Why? Because it needs a source of power. It needs a source of light. So we're like this crystal jar. On the outside, we may look okay, but if Jesus isn't inside, we're empty and we're not really good for much. So we're gonna imagine that this candle is the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us, he brings the light of the gospel into our life. And look at that, it begins to shine out and it begins to reflect so that other people can see that we're not just a glass jar anymore, but we're a believer filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as we begin to do right and point people to Jesus, and they begin to accept Jesus, it's an, an amazing thing happens. We begin to share that light, and so the more people we share the gospel with, that will light up. The more light we have, to light the world around us. And that's gonna burn my finger.
I have to be careful. So there's another one. That's just like, here's another friend to share the gospel with. What they having a hard time understanding. There they go. They heard it. Now they understand it. Here's another friend. So we went from just being a plate of candles with no power and no light to being filled with the Holy Spirit through the power of God's word. And I just blew that out because I'm talking so much. Here we go. So when we were just a, a glass jar empty, an empty vessel that needed to be filled, when we asked Jesus into our heart, he came into our life, the power of the Holy Spirit filled us with the light of the gospel. We began to shine that gospel out. We begin to tell our friends about Jesus. So now, not just one person knows, but six people know. And you know what's exciting? There are people that come to our church because some of you shared the gospel with them. Some of you were, weren't afraid. You weren't ashamed. You said the gospel is the most important thing. I'm gonna tell this person until they believe. And you kept telling them and you kept inviting them. And you know what? They came to church. And you know what? They heard Pastor Joey preach the Bible and they asked Jesus into our heart, into their heart. And now they're part of God's family. Isn't that great? Now with all this light, what do we do with it? Because when we do good deeds and people notice us, sometimes it's hard not to brag. Sometimes it's hard not to feel proud of ourselves. But I learned a really important lesson from a friend of mine. And she said that when we do something good and people notice, we shouldn't accept the glory, but we should be like a mirror, reflecting the glory back to Jesus. So when I put this mirror up, this mirror reflects the light. It reflects the light back to Jesus. So when someone compliments me, the Apostle Paul said, don't talk about yourself, talk about Jesus. So it's just like this mirror. When someone says, you're doing a great job, don't say, yeah, I'm amazing. No, say, God is in me. God gave me the power to choose to do right. And he's the most important thing. And so your words reflect people right back to Jesus. So this week, I want you to be the light that God's called you to be. Because our Go Answer says, God makes us the light of the world. Can you do that? Well, you can't in your own strength, but through the power of Jesus in your heart, filling you with the light of the gospel, you can do whatever God's called you to do.